Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and we're tasting the porter that I brewed on New Year's Day 2021. This came from BYO Magazine. It's the old Brow Brow Porter clone. And uh, I am psyched about this. If you uh, follow us on Instagram, I said that uh, Mike was probably going to cry tears of joy from this that uh, smelled great on the brew day. I think it's come mm. through... through uh, the finished product but let's talk a little bit more about it we'll just do like a little bit about the recipe again the grain bill was uh for a five gallon batch it was uh eight pounds of uh, maris otter two pounds of brown malt which is probably why it came out so well <laughs> and then uh 0.3 pounds or uh you know 1.4 kilograms of uh black malt uh black patent malt we had some, uh, like one charge of uh, East Coast, uh, East Kent uh, Golding hops. And then uh, the yeast, we didn't follow what was in the recipe. Uh, I couldn't find Y yeast 1099, so we went with uh, Y yeast 1028, which is the British ale strain. Mm. And uh, this, we were talking about uh, the starting gravity. We we're targeting 1049. I'm happy to say that we reached that with uh, our process. The um, finishing gravity was supposed to be a little higher. I think it was uh, the recipe I don't have exactly in front of me, but I think it was looking for like 1017. Yep. Came in more like 1015, which I'm still happy about. I didn't want it to be uh, super dry. There should be a little bit of uh, body to this. Um, and the other uh, tip fr from the recipe in the magazine was that you can ferment for a week and then transfer that to a secondary for two weeks, which I did no, not do. I just do left it in primary for three weeks and don't then racked and kegged from yeah. there. So this I is know. forced carbonated. Um, I love the descriptor on this. Actually, yes, final gravity was supposed to be 1017, so we missed it by... A couple of points but again i don't think you're gonna really notice that with this so i'll let mike talk about what he's thinking about this let's see if there's a lot of let me see uh, the waterworks starting no <laughs> it's uh well so the first aroma right off the bat is uh is there's a beautiful aroma of like um the best thing i can describe it as is like a chocolate cookie like a little bit of that like a almost like a <clears throat> almost like a an Oreo, the wafer itself, yeah. you know, get the, the cream part away from it. Just has that, um, so there's like a crackery, like a chocolate crackery thing in the aroma, which is really nice. And then on the flavor profile, I get a, um, I get a little bit more of the chocolate, but there's definitely more of like a toast. And actually there's almost like a little, for me, there's almost like a little bit of a um, maple quality mm. playing around in there too. Um, it's got just a hint of like a sweetness to it, um, which is probably more so the dark, for me, dark malts and the, that little twinge of acidity there can sometimes play as sweet in my, on my, my palate at least. Um, but there's definitely more of that, is that cookie again? Um, more of that, that, <laughs> that, that, that crackery, um, toasted malt i'm trying to avoid saying that brown malt thing because that's probably where a lot of that's coming mm. from um you know nice, nice chewy biscuity toasty thing and then um so for me the mouthfeel is more medium low medium to low it's like somewhere between low and medium it's it's nice it's got a very uh fairly dry-ish finish um and the bitterness is pretty, the hop character is pretty subdued. Um, and it's really, the bitterness that I get, there's a very mild bitterness that appears to me more of a black malt bitterness yeah, yeah. than a hop bitterness. Yeah. So it'd be, fun, it'd be fun to brew one of these sometime just like this, but without the hops in there. So you could really taste it and go, oh, okay, right? That's what the East um, End that's what it's That's yeah. what it's doing. Yeah, yeah. Or the, meaning like, oh, so, what I'm tasting, 80% of that bitterness is the black malt, or right? Yeah. You know, it'd just yep. be interesting to know what that yep. is. Um, other than that, I think that the maybe some of that sweetness, the 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 1098, 1028, 10 which one would you 1028. use? 1028. 1028. Yeah. Uh, really good ferment. 
Yeah. I mean, it's it's a nice clean ferment. There isn't really much um, yeast character, but there's a nice, I think that sweetness with the black malt, there's a little bit of an ester thing, English ester quality going in there, but uh, it doesn't have a linger aftertaste. Um, so all those things together, this is, uh, it is very good. I think for me, if there was porter and Port, I'm always confused what I want to have in a porter, right? <laughs> but I but I will say this, rather than go into a long philosophical debate about that, what I do know is when I drink porter, I like to taste that crackery, toasty, intense brown malt flavor. Yeah. To me, too. that's more to me brown the flavor of brown malt in a porter is even more important than like that roasted barley flavor in a stout mm. like this, it, meaning from an enjoyment standpoint yeah. i don't care about classic whatever and you know everybody's palate you everyone should do what they want to do with their with their dark beer recipes but for me it really makes this work so yeah. you know, it's, it's excellent this is it's it's really good yeah uh, I I like this a lot. I've been drinking it like I was working in a mill in the uh, <laughs> 1800s in London, and uh, you know after work I'd have a, a pint or two. Um, and because it's it's you know low on the ABV scale, uh, the recipe is saying it's 4.1. I calculated this being 4.4, yep. 4.6. Again, uh, really easy drinking. Uh, I didn't mind like. I think it's like medium, like you said, medium full, the medium, you know, um, uh, it's not that, uh, that full in terms of its body. Um, I was trying to see if I could get um, the commercial version of this and compare it side oh, by yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Springdale does not have it on tap. They've no, moved no. on to some robust porter. Yep. They don't have that. Um, the other brewery <laughs> that has it on tap is like two and a half mile like two and a half hours, hours away, away. Yeah. like one way so a five hour trip I, you know I, i'm definitely a big fan of of the dash but uh <laughs> five hours in the car yeah. you know like and that's not counting like actually getting it and coming back that uh, that didn't yeah. seem to be a, an option um but no i i the the one porter that i really like and you can get it um locally is uh, mayflower porter they are a brewery out of Plymouth, Massachusetts, yeah. uh, and uh, their porter I, I seek out every fall and winter to have in my fridge. And uh, that to me is a porter that I would like to uh, emulate. And I think this definitely- This is a, a damn fine, yeah. pretty you know, substitute. I, yeah. I think Mayflower to me is a little less, um, less crackery biscuit and just a little bit more dark malt flavored yeah, but, yeah. and actually and i think there must be a little there's a if i remember some there's something weird about that recipe their recipe but there's a caramelly note to it which is a little stronger than than this yep right yep um, this so like so the, so i looked at the uh, grain bill for mayflower it's like munich it's, yeah yeah it's, yeah it's 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 not uh and i think they actually use roasted barley in yep. that too um, the one thing I can tell I can say on the aftertaste of this beer, and it's noted here, um, even vanilla like flavors yeah. from the brown malt in the aftertaste, it's like, it tastes a little like vanilla extract. Like if you ever had like, you yeah, know. yeah. I, mean, I think maybe that's some of the, for me on the, the primary flavor there, I get that little bit of that maple and you know, there, there's definitely a, a a couple of things have come together to create something bigger than the sum of its parts. And, mm -hmm. you know, that vanilla thing or what I'm perceiving as being like a sort of like a little maple twinge. Um, there's definitely something there yep. that isn't there. That isn't there. You yep. know, it but is, it's there. It, <laughs> it is there. All right. Thanks for drinking this. Uh, not quite the waterworks. But it just needs uh, a little more body for me. <laughs> but it's good. It's very good. I should have thrown in some like oats or something like that to like. Was there any water? What was the. the if I remember right, you did nothing to the water. This nope. is just straight up our tap yeah, water, right? Yeah, just filtered tap it's water. It's amazing how good it is with all that sodium. But yeah. um, <laughs> awesome. Sodium brings out the flavor. I guess so. <laughs> all right. So uh, if you're a fan of porters, I can I can say I recommend yeah, the uh, Brow Brow uh, Porter clone from BYO Magazine. Uh, check it out. Simple uh, grain bill, only three grains, and then... You know, uh, one hop charge and then pick a, an English ale yeast of your choice and I think you'll be okay. Uh, certainly uh, a great recipe for porter fans everywhere. 
Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We do this every single week. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.